Hello there. I hear you now. Hello, James. All right, Hello, we'll start James. in. Good morning, everyone. We'll start in one minute. There's a lot going on. All right, it's ten. Woohoo! Hello, everybody. <laughs> we'll go ahead and start. Um, I know that Anshul has been very busy posting and contributing. Uh, so so if he joins us, great. Uh, but I have have some updates. Uh, from what he's shared already. So this is our stand-up. We'll do our stand-up for FPGA work first. And what we do is talk about what we've done over the last little bit. In our case, it's a week. Uh, yes, I know that um, tr this is not traditional stand-up style, which is daily, uh, you know, but we do what we can. So we talk about what we've done over the past week, what we're going to, what we have planned to do over the next week. If we have any roadblocks, and that's kind of the the key function here is to figure out if you have a roadblock that you can't move forward without help and the the proper agile development response is to swarm and bring everybody in like you're putting up a flare or sending up an alarm uh, and if you need any resources uh, so we, we do have the ability to to obtain resources for people either donated from the community or we're just going to buy it if we need to so that's that's one of the functions of this particular meetup. Um, so in terms of um, like FPGA standup, let's go ahead and do a roundup. And I think I'm going to say I don't have any um, sub substantial progress since the last. We're 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 working on understanding how to do the uplink receiver. Um, and no, I have not gotten it working on our in our dev board, but we've we've done a huge amount of of research into figuring out if we actually have a right right understanding of uh, minimum frequency shift keying. Turns out we we do, and we'll keep digging in. Uh, we have a plan for putting in the additional protocol layers for the uplink. Um, that's protocol work and general processing work, and then that's going to feed directly into the uplink uh, HDL. Um, so I guess when I say there's lots going on, there's lots going on, but it's not yet visible in the in the development board uh, or FPGA lab. Uh, I'm really, really excited about this. So thank you very much to Paul and all the other people that have helped us. Um, that's a That'll be a big step forward. We've had have a big step and with demonstrations over the air with just essentially the bare opus um, stuff with the so header file all and, and seeing that working and presenting it to the community and getting a good response was fantastic. The next part is to finish the protocol and then implement it on it on HDL. The what I showed last week or two was uh, frequency shift keying within the time domain in an HDL implementation in Verilog that was working on a smaller processor. Um, and there's been some good discussion on Slack over the, especially over the past week. And one of the interesting things is that one of the modules is the synchronizer, which it takes in two values, the high and the low, because uh, this is binary FSK. So you have either a zero or one, and it's either high or low frequency. So highs and lows and zeros and ones are connected. Um, that actually got some criticism from some experienced ASIC designers from two of them. Uh, Thomas Perry flagged it correctly as a clock domain challenge um, that that's odd to do that and and has some risk that you might update some of the bits in the value and not others and and um, a Qualcomm volunteer said the same thing so it was an interesting choice it looks like that the designer which I have yet to confirm but it looks like the designer of this particular open source repo really wanted to be very flexible wanted there was a clock domain crossing here meaning that you have of results or your your limits. What is a zero and what is a one with your FSK, which might have Doppler, which might have noise, might be some some other things might be changing, and they wanted it to be adaptable. That's our interpretation. Um, but those things are coming from outside of the clock domain in the rest of the logic. And anytime you have a, a domain crossing, uh, that's a big red flag for you to fix. So um, when we implement it, we might just drop that entire module. And the, it's interesting because the module is from Edis Research and is neat and good and looks like it's been around for a while. Um, but but maybe uh, we don't need it or we, we figure out a way to use it uh, or, or to have the same sort of functions um, without a clock domain crossing. So anyway, that's, that's kind of the update there. Um, 
I know Anshul has been, been working on the MQTT uh, control for the downlink transmitter. I've not seen anything in the lab yet, uh, but they're still working on it. And he's been also engaged with updating and, and getting ver the Versatune receiver, which is a wonderful project that we will be featuring at Hamcation uh, next year. Okay, so that's uh, that's it for me. Um, that's my report. I'm going to hand it over uh, to to James, and then James, you can hand it over to Paul. Um, hello, everyone. I'm James. I work with the ORI Remote Lab South. I take care of some of the equipment here and get some of the lab running. Um, not too much to report from Remote Lab South this past week. We've just been keeping on getting more work done on repairing the main building that will be holding ho holding and hosting a lot of our equipment. Um, there's not too much to report there beyond just the work that we keep doing. So I'll go ahead and pass that on to Paul. Thank you, James. I have not done any FPGA work in the last week and don't have anything stopping me. The next stage, as Michelle mentioned, is to move the opulent voice into an actual protocol stack so that it would play well with others and use uh, existing TCP IP protocols. Uh, this adds a substantial amount of overhead, uh, so we'll have to adjust the, the bit rate on the channel and so on. Uh, this should be non-disruptive because we've tried to parameterize everything, but uh, it's always a dangerous word to use, should. So I had nothing further for the FPGA part of the meeting and nothing going on in the remote labs either. All right. Hey, thank you so much for all the protocol work. It, it should uh, be something that we can we can adjust the existing design to and parameterizing it in the HDL as well as the general purpose code, I think will will do do us good. Uh, I'm still still interested in looking at uh, at maybe a runtime adaptation for the bit rate, but like we talked about yesterday, if it's just build time, then I think that's that's quota busting in and of itself. All right. Oh, hi. hello, Anshul. I know you you've been uh, uh, quite busy, so the floor is yours. Yeah. Um, starting with um, encoder part. So uh, MQTT, I was able to um, remove all the hard coding or all the customization that was related to Pluto. Uh, I adapted it to ZC706, uh, but it looks like still some more changes needs to be done uh, where we are getting voltage, frequency, uh, device ID. So still more changes need to be done. MQTT streaming uh, is, the, uh, is the binary where some more changes are required. So I'm working on that. Uh, but in the meantime, I just thought of removing the complexity of MQTT and just uh, work on a simple application that will just get the context, IIO context and do some transfers. That worked. Um, I got three iterations of EX and RX. Uh, but of course, in those, uh, in that, when when those transfers were done our uh, encoder was not involved so if i run my script to check the registers related to pb scrambler and everything all the components of uh, encoder those all show zero but i see that uh, tx and rx being done so that give uh, that has given me confidence and now i will go back to mqtt adapt it further uh, and my aim here is when, when I should run the register status file, it should give me how many packets are in transit. That will give us uh, a surety that encoder is working properly. Uh, that's on that front. Uh, on Versatune front, uh, you can see that picture. That's Versatune running on another monitor. Uh, I got the code. Uh, I got the code compiled today. Uh, Bob was busy with some other work, but yeah, he shared steps. So I got the code compiled uh, and run. I, I'm able to execute that. Uh, also, there is another software that's long grind or something. Uh, that's the base one. I'm able to compile that code also. Uh, now I will progress on that of uh, basically I will start working on the actual task that's needed. So I'm going to have discussion with Art and Bob with regards to that. Yeah, that's me. Well, that's a, a 
tremendous amount. Thank you so much. Um, very okay. exciting to see all of this happen. And and if um, if anybody uh, wants to follow along or help uh, the the Versatune uh, project, then please get in touch with Anshul. And uh, yep. yeah, we'll, we're looking forward. We plan on this being at uh, Hamcation. And yep. uh, there's a, yeah, so if you can support that, if you're interested in volunteering for that, then let me know. Groovy. Okay, we have a lot of things that are going to be published um, soon for the transponder. So our uh, uh, open source uh, HEO slash GEO uh, transponder work is going to appear in the Jamset journal. So this is a another uh, place where the same sort of presentation from Ham Expo uh, and DEF CON will, will appear. And this is uh, a membership and an organization that's been really vital in giving us good feedback and that we hope to partner with to make this a reality for uh, for getting into space um, at any level. I think that the, it's up to the community, us included, to, to put together a, a functional consortium of organizations that can get this into space. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we have uh, all sorts of things going on terrestrially. So the, the work for the uplink protocol uh, can also be used terrestrially. We're making lots of progress with several groups and several implementations. And we'll have a, a demo in November at the San Bernardino Microbe Society. So that's our next opportunity to show off all this stuff working. Uh, the power bus side of the house is is getting in uh, into, into shape. Um, so providing power to all of these uh, things, uh, FPGAs can can draw some amount of power. So we need to be able to provide power for the for the digital board, for the TTMC, and for all of the RF components. And so those budgets and an actual benchtop, um, you know, design and and prototype are, are underway, and we're building uh, motors as well. So all of this stuff feeds into the communications, which will be uh, enabled by FPGA work. So plenty coming up. I think that uh, our, but our major shows for the, for our kind of season uh, tends to be kind of late summer, fall that is over. So we will have uh, more uninterrupted time, <laughs> which is the thing that we all view as the true currency of, of volunteer source or uh, volunteer and open source work is uninterrupted time. I think we could all probably use more of that. Okay. Any other questions? questions or comments or any resources that you might need uh, that we can help with or any roadblocks. Um, I think uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, speak up if you have them or, or any last advice or comments for the for the upcoming week. This power discussion is happening on which channel? That'll be Hyperaria uh, bus. Okay. Uh, there's also a little bit in the propulsion channel on Slack. Mm -hmm. um, but just a, a little bit. The propulsion is about the trying to build the, um, the prototype propulsion in, and and that of course then then is uh, uh, related to the bus work. But uh, Hyperia bus is where the the power consumption stuff is is going on. Um, so so we're, and then also it's it's in the we're trying to fold that into the weekly reports as well. Um, so yeah, we have. We have, I think the, the Thomas Perry, his advice was, okay, you really need to figure out the power dissipation and the power consumption yeah. mm -hmm. as soon as possible, uh, along with the mass and, and all that. But the, mm -hmm. the power consumption is really kind of critical because we think based on the Delta V, which mm -hmm. we do have a more challenging orbit than in the past because mm -hmm. we have a higher, uh, the, the, the lowest altitude, we want it to be 1,250 kilometers, and that is going to increase the delta V, which increases all sorts of other stuff. And so mm -hmm. looking at the electronic propulsion, it, the estimate right now is 18 to 24 little teeny engines in arrays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And well, that's that's plenty of power. So so now we need to to go through and, and actually build something um, and see, see what we can do. So it'll be, uh, by comparison to, so maybe uh, flight hardware, this is uh, fast and cheap. So what we're going to do is bring out all those nickel metal hydride cells that we have, go ahead and do the mm -hmm. battery matching curves. Mm -hmm. And that will be the re that will stand in for the rechargeable source. 
uh, which mm -hmm. may end up being lithium ion in space because that's what most people use. But the those batteries will okay. be pulled out of the bridge and put together into into batteries. And we now know that there are uh, plenty of super caps that we can get uh, to put for the super capacitor part of this design because mm -hmm. that is looking like a, a good thing to have for the electric propulsion. It's a good match. Uh, and then solar panels. Um, mm -hmm. And so some sort of solar panel simulator or solar panel or actual solar panel to stand in. And then mm -hmm. we'll have this on a bench and and basically make it work really hard. Um, and that's that's going to be the basis of our of our bus. Uh, awesome. We do have a, a good tool from Libra Space Foundation. They have a power consumption oh. or power management Python uh, framework, and that is linked in the Slack channel. Um, so Thomas was a little concerned that maybe this wasn't stress tested uh, very hard, uh, but I think maybe we can start using this tool today. And if it mm -hmm. needs to be improved in any way or does not have something that we need, uh, that we can contribute it back to the repository. Yep. And that's that's basically all of the headlines that I know for the week. Okay. Cool. All right. Any other comments before we close for the day? All right, thank you, everybody. It's been quite the week. Uh, we uh, got plenty going on across the board uh, in all sorts of projects. And thank you, everyone, so much for your time. It's invaluable and deeply appreciated. All right, see you on Slack.